Big day on Capitol Hill. TikTok CEO Shozi Chu getting grilled by the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Take a look. We do not trust TikTok will ever embrace American values. That's not enough for me. That's not enough for the parents of America. Do they have access to user data? Why, if you had nothing to hide, would you need to downplay the association with ByteDance in China? You damn well know that you cannot protect the data and security of this committee or the 150 million users of your app. Mr. Chu, your company destroyed their lives. Your company destroyed their lives. Do they, yes or no? I'm not sure because- yeah, whoa, 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 come on now, you're not sure? I really am not sure. Re remember, you took the, the chair lady, she said, you gotta tell the truth, okay? Your platform should be banned. Bam. For more reaction, we turn to Yahoo Finance's Michelle Akufo. Nice to see you, my friend. Uh, this is the rare bipartisan outrage. Indeed, there were very, very few voices, if any, actually supporting TikTok today. And one of the things that we were watching going into this hearing was just before the te just before the hearing, just a day before, we saw that uh, Sho Chu had really highlighted this idea of having 150 million monthly active users in the U.S., five million businesses on there as well, mostly small and medium-sized businesses. This couldn't have backfired harder. The way that this was looked at, Chair Rogers said this really set the tone in terms of the user numbers actually meaning more urgency for Congress to act. So what could be good business for TikTok is definitely not the play that would have been helpful for him today. Also want to talk about the four commitments that Shochu said he was going to lay out for the company. He said prioritizing safety for young users. Now we did also see some powerful content played out, especially of a 16 year old teen in New York who committed suicide after watching some of the videos that ended up coming up in his feed. He was definitely pressed on that and whether or not he was responsible for the algorithm behind it, really trying to get him to take responsibility. Lawmakers looking for yes or no answers, looking for certainty. Now, the second commitment was that the app will remain a place for free expression and will not be manipulated by any government. Now, we know that he had a very hard time with this. Lawmakers really hammered into TikTok's relationship with ByteDance, what it would do and if there was anything they could do if compelled by the CCP to share that data. We saw that lawmakers were not convinced that any guarantees that Shou Chu could make in this hearing, he could actually uphold based on Chinese media laws. Also, transparency was number four. Now, I spoke to Representative Obernolte, who is a former, um, a former game video um, producer. He's also the only member of Congress with a degree in AI. He didn't seem convinced that even with the assurances that TikTok could offer, that the data could ever be protected or that it wouldn't end up reaching a third party. So a lot of convincing that Shou Chu had to do today. It doesn't look as though he pulled it off. And we do know that the other issue was this firewall protection. Now that brings up Project Texas. Texas named for Oracle, which is the, where the company resides, the headquarters of Oracle resides. Now they were meant to be this, this sort of buffer, provide this safety here. And to testify that 100% of US user traffic is being routed to Oracle and USDS controlled infrastructure in the United States. Again, though, a lot of lawmakers still not convinced that that goes far enough or that they can separate themselves enough if compelled to try and sell off parts of the company. China already saying, then they're not going to stand behind that if someone tries to compel ByteDance to sell its stake in the company. One thing, though, this is a bigger issue than just TikTok. There have been more calls for more national transparency laws and data security laws that cover all of the social media companies. But TikTok in particular drawing the eye because of that relationship with China. Another issue they wanted to look at was the ownership structure. They wanted to know sort of the role that ByteDance has in TikToks every day. They talked, asked if, if they shared the same lawyers coming into this testimony. She admitted that they did. So it was very hard to sort of separate the two. And we did see that Xu testified that 60% of ByteDance is owned by global institutional investors. He named BlackRock, General, Atlantic, and Sequoia, about 20% by the company's founders, and the rest owned by employees, including, as he said, thousands of Americans. A lot of people, we also heard questioning about the percentage of revenue from TikTok that goes to ByteDance. And he said, of course, this is a private company, TikTok is, and that he's not obligated to share that data. Lawmakers not happy about that. They wanted at least some kind of ballpark figure, but Chu unwilling to give that at this time. Guys? 
Yeah, Chu certainly prepared well for this. Didn't give many of the answers that lawmakers were hoping to hear today. Rochelle, great stuff. We'll check in with you in a bit. Thanks so much. And Dave, we talk about so many of the issues at hand here. And TikTok CEO went to Capitol Hill, really trying to convince lawmakers that TikTok should not be viewed as a national security concern. From my views, I don't think he did a good job convincing lawmakers of that. You saw the outrage inside that room. It was very fiery. The exchanges, there was a lot of emotion within that. And he was saying, and Rochelle just referenced this here, whether or not TikTok is prepared if it needs to divest from ByteDance. And he simply said that ownership was not the issue. He didn't give many concrete answers, didn't give the lawmakers exactly what he wanted to hear, largely what we're expecting from today. I thought it was a devastating day for yeah. TikTok, nothing short of that. I thought it was a terrifying day as a parent to watch this hearing unfold. Even as a citizen who's on the app but doesn't use it, it was rather scary. Um, they in no way answered the questions, the fears that parents and congressmen and national security officials have. In fact, our U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, said today TikTok should be, quote, ended one way or another. There are different ways of doing that. Now, their chief argument seemed to be no, we're not doing these things that you fear we could do, but the fact of the matter is they could, and that's the fear. If, in fact, China decides to weaponize TikTok, they could. There is nothing stopping Chinese officials from accessing U.S. user data. And I will say this major caveat. A lot of this hearing could have been directed at Facebook, at Twitter, at Reels, at just about any social media platform. But again, the difference is those are not owned by China and not subject to review by Chinese communist officials. Harmful content exists on all these platforms, mm -hmm. which was really a focus of today. And that should be spread out among all these social media platforms, not just TikTok. But again, this is one that Imp that implicates our national security. It's controlled by the Communist Party. Nothing short of a devastating day for the platform. And I think will lead to a ban. You know, I, I was skeptical of a ban going into this. I am more convinced that maybe we will see a ban in the future. It's going to upset a heck of a lot of people. If TikTok, if those numbers are to 150 million Americans, they say, use that app. That is a heck of a lot of people on just one single app. And Dave, you mentioned the fact that we could be, be using this type of lines of questionings towards many of the social media, all the social media CEOs. And that's something that you did point out during this, uh, during the uh, testimony today, saying that U.S. social media companies do not have a great track record when it comes to protecting user data. Also, Chu was asked several times that if China did have access to U.S. data, let's take a listen to what he had to say. Today, all um, U.S. user data is stored by default in the Oracle Cloud question, infrastructure, and access, access to that is controlled is, do any by American dance personnel. dance employees in China, including engineers, currently have access to U.S. data? Uh, Congressman, uh, I would appreciate this. This is a complex uh, topic. Today, all data yes, is stored yes by no. default. No, it's not that complex. Yes or no, do they have access to user data? We have, after Project Texas is done, the answer is no. Today, there's still yeah, so some data saying, that we need yes, to delete. Yes, but we've heard already from the ranking saying. member that he, hasn't, and, uh, that he doesn't really see that uh, Project Texas is going to be useful. When and give that yes or no answer, which lawmaker after lawmaker wanted to hear today. And I think Representative uh, Rochester put it perfectly, Lisa Rochester, saying that this testimony raised more questions than answers. And I think a lot of people walked away after listening to this pretty concerned with some of the data that TikTok has access to. One of the most terrifying things in this presentation was a video that was up on the site for 41 days. It was a video telling a story of a mass shooting on this very day at this hearing, naming U.S. congressman, naming Kathy McMorris. That video was up prior to the public announcement of this hearing, yet had the date on it. It was up until today when the hearing, they took it down. Last thing I'll say is, most people on TikTok that I've spoken to do not care about their data being compromised. We will speak to a panel of influencers about their feelings on their subject, which totally matters a lot. Do they care about potentially their data being compromised? I think mostly likely the answer is no.